Welcome to the Daily Bone, a week dominated by Hillsborough, when the middle classes uh, wised up to the fact that the working classes have known for ages that the police are a bunch of murdering, thieving, lying scum, corrupt scum. Before I go to that in the main, a um, couple of points. Uh, it was good to see some working class women on the, uh, the, the two working class women on the the Hillsborough campaign on the television. So rarely get anyone working class on telly, leave alone working class women. They are articulate, passionate and brilliant. And maybe we can see a few more working class women on the television. The other thing is that like, it, it, it was amusing to see Roy Greenslade, the uh, one time editor of the Daily Mirror, being the only uh, uh, journalist coming to the defence of the Sun's apology, saying that the, uh, the Sun's apology was sincere and we should accept it as such. It was, of course, uh, Comrade Greenslade, who was editor of the Daily Mirror during the 1985 miners strike and libelled Arthur Scarborough by saying that he built his house with Libyan money, slandered the miners, had all the money from Libya and that Scarborough had ripped off the miners and kept the money himself. Ten years later, he issued a grovelling apology to Arthur Scarborough and damages, so of course he would be in favour of believing in the sincerity of apologies. I think what... Uh, what, what uh, Hillsborough means beyond the, the event itself. As you look at the 1980s, you can see a highly politicised police force. We'd seen Orgreave, um, 94 miners charged with riot, full of lies, all acquitted eventually, lies, uh, alteration of evidence, uh, fitting up, exactly the same kind of uh, alteration of statements as we saw at Hillsborough. And I'd chuck in there Stonehenge as well. Um, again, uh, massive arrests prepared for by the media beforehand uh, and widespread lies fitting up and so on. Um, you can recall that the, the police in, uh, in Wiltshire said they expected, expected the peace convoy to have guns, uh, firearms, all sorts of weapons, none of which would be true, but which the willing media uh, hyped up before the convoy was attacked. Uh, perhaps even worse, you can recall that Kim Sabido of IRM, one of the, uh, the correspondents uh, present, uh, witnessed some awful events going on and managed to get some film away which he feared the police would seize and get it into the ITN studios in London for safekeeping. Two days later he went back there, the, uh, the entire film was missing. Um, so I think what we've seen is a highly politicised force throughout the, uh, throughout the 80s under Mar Margaret Thatcher's guidance. I mean people say was there a conspiracy, did she have a word with the police to be uh, you know, directly political? No, but as uh, as Lord Denning and uh, Melford Stevenson, two other scumbag judges, said in the 1970s, a nod's as good as a wink. And there's no doubt that Thatcher gave a nod and a wink to the chief constables throughout, uh, throughout the country to go in and batter the fuck out of people. Besides those two, you could look at Broadwater Farm, the fill up of Winston Silcott, uh, the Brixton riots, the, the shooting of Cherry Gross and Cynthia Jarrett. Again, lies, 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 all of which comes out years later. Uh, and I think what, what, what we saw in, in the 80s under, under Thatcher was a highly politicised police force which is directly aiming to uh, follow Thatcher's dictum, there's no such thing as society, and smash the working class where they had any experience of collective life, whether it's football, at free festivals like Stonehenge, at work like the miners, not in a carnival, and where people lived. They tried to smash up the old uh, inner city front lines, which were seen as possibly lawless and, and leading to riot and they pleased them by design. So eventually, Inspector Pierman in All Saints Road in Notting Hill, he didn't uh, force out the mangrove uh, uh, and the rest of the black front lines, but pleased it out by design, by doing uh, picture framers and we've seen what's happening in Notting Hill today. Uh, class war was saying this through the 80s, so I'm not going to say I told you so, but it now, you know, all these things happen 20 years later, the police apologise and it's all about um, Oh, well, it's all different now. There's new fucking guidelines in there. It's all a load of bollocks. Um, this is the first one I'm doing, so it may be a bit rough at the edges. Uh, but I'd like to finally end on a rather quirky note for this first one. That one, of, one of the brave souls who probably prevented people being killed at uh, the Battle of Beanfield was Lord Cardigan, uh, the Toff, who let the convoy stay over Nike and Seven Eight Forest to follow him down and see what happened. And very bravely and boldly for a Toff, intervened and said after exactly what he's seen. Now since then in the last couple of years uh, Lord Cardigan has had some sort of mental breakdown, he's been chucked out of the marital home in Seven Eight Forest, he's lost all the, uh, uh, the, the, the land, he couldn't even live in a squatted house on the premises and I think he's living in, I think he's in, confined to some mental institution. So we don't forget those who, who've been, uh, who's been on our side and intervened at times, so uh, 
Be get well soon to Lord Cardigan and uh, nice one mate.